Hey guys, so I'm back with another astrological birth chart analysis. This is gonna be for a girl who is four years younger than me. So she's about 26 years old. She was born on July 8th, 1994 at approximately 10.55 p.m. She has in her first house Aquarius. So she's an Aquarius rising. So what can we say about Aquarius risings? Um, so your rising sign is typically how you come off to the people what your personality is kind of like and how the external world perceives you okay so that's pretty much what it represents so having aquarius here in this placement as you're rising this would give you a naturally curious personality to you you're the type of person or she is the type of person who would love to watch like tv shows like ancient aliens or national geographic stuff like that. this is also a good placement for people who would make good astrologers and again she could possibly be very spiritual with this placement and she's the type of person who wants to know how things in the universe work. Having Saturn here, also she does have Saturn in the first house of Aquarius. So as a child, this would have indicated that she would have felt like she had to grow up a whole lot younger. Or she might have felt robbed of her childhood in a sense because she was a lot more mature than the rest of the kids back in the day. Um, she was also very serious or responsible and again, she could have felt like her childhood was deprived. I'm going to throw out a bunch of career possibilities, but I'm going to focus primarily on the ones that I think she might possibly gain for throughout the whole um, synopsis or her birth chart breakdown. So. Having Saturn in the first house, this aspects her third, seventh, and tenth house. This causes her seventh house to have a very loyal or faithful marriage. And there might be discipline and duty in the marriage, or that's how they would get along her and her spouse. And she is also very likely to marry someone who is far more mature than her or older in age. Why? Because Saturn essentially is a planet that gives discipline to whatever sign or placement it might have. Since we have an aspect of Saturn shining down its light onto the seventh house, it's going to give discipline to the seventh house. And therefore, her and her partner are going to be very mature towards one another. And again, she might possibly end up marrying someone who's older. And this aspect also could possibly indicate a delayed marriage. So she's more likely to marry later on in life. So when you talk about late marriages in astrology, it's typically time after the age of 30 anything after that is kind of considered a late marriage okay so she will also have a duty to her spouse and she will make friends with people who are mature this aspect onto the third house will give her very disciplined relationship with her siblings because that's what the third house represents is your siblings she is likely not to have younger siblings so this makes her the eldest person in the family I did ask her if she was the oldest and she said yes. So she might also feel stress regarding them or she might feel like she gives a lot to her siblings but then they don't reciprocate the same effort or energy back to her and this might be frustrating to her. Also, the Saturn aspect onto the 10th house. 10th house pretty much represents your career, your status in life and how people might perceive you in the professional workplace. So in this case, this would make her very disciplined in her career. And because again, Saturn indicates some form of predictability. It's not anything like Mercury where it's like very versatile. It's able to adapt very quickly. Saturn pretty much constricts or restricts again the aspects or whatever sign or house it's sitting in so in this case she wouldn't do well in jobs that are kind of unpredictable like sales jobs because she needs routine or predictability in her workplace or in her job okay so saturn and aquarius since we have it in the first house this would indicate that in life she has lessons to learn regarding anything that represents the first house so the first house represents the self your image, your body, your physical appearance. And it also represents your typical temperament or your approach to life. So perhaps she has lessons to learn in this life regarding those things. 
Saturn in Aquarius is also able to organize personal finances of others. So again, this could indicate that she might be good at that. And she could also possibly be a financial advisor. She has great organizational skills to organize large social events. And she can also have an impact on society. So when she goes through her Saturn Mahadasha, and if you guys don't know what a Mahadasha is, it's typically a time period in your life. And... On her birth chart, Mahadashas are indicated here. So right now she is currently running her Mercury Mahadasha um, or her Dasha period. Saturn, she already passed her Saturn Mahadasha actually. So she's currently in her Mercury Mahadasha. So I don't know if in the recent years she was more preoccupied with the social welfare of people because that's typically what occurs during Saturn Mahadashas with people with displacement. So now we have the Lord of Capricorn, which is ruling the 12th house and it's currently sitting in the first house and we're still talking about Saturn, okay? So she will be viewed as someone who is lost, not in her right mind or lost within herself. And I asked her, do you feel kind of lost pertaining to your career field or what you're doing in life? And she said, yes. And she will either come off to people as very spiritual or someone who does not know what they're doing with her life. But despite of however the world perceives her in the external world, she knows who she is. Or she doesn't feel all that lost as to like how people might perceive her on the external world. Also, her personality and ego are going to be shaped quite a bit by spiritual people or people confined to anything related to the 12th house so when we talk about the 12th house we're talking about foreign places so her personality could possibly be molded by foreign people foreign places and then we're also talking about spirituality when we talk about the 12th house um 12th house also deals with hospitals jails so maybe she could possibly run into people who work in these fields that somehow have some form of impact on her and then the 12th house, house also deals with the subconscious, perhaps psychology, or again, the dream realm. So people may be, again, related to spirituality here. They're all going to have an impact on her. And again, her chart is like completely riddled with placement. That speaks spirituality or that, again, that she's going to have a heavy inclination towards spirituality. So with this placement, she can also have affairs. Foreign things will affect her personality. Saturn controlling the 12th house, going into the first can make her have like a depressed type of personality. Also, her personality comes off as a little bit slow paced in the sense where like she might talk slowly to people or she processes her thoughts a little bit slower than most people not in a bad way but i think i have like similar speech where i kind of just talk slow sometimes to people but that's what it could possibly indicate again we have two signs ruling her first house so it's both aquarius and then pisces so Essentially, Pisces in the first house, you're going to come off as a dreamy person. Again, someone who's kind of lost, someone who's very spiritual, because that Pisces rules the original 12th house, which is spirituality and all those things I previously mentioned, okay? So, she's the type of person who loves to discuss esoteric topics such as astrology, aliens, psychics, etc. Her family may be very communicative with her. And she will also be a chatterbox at home, but for the most part, only at home. She loves talking about spiritual things and she has an emotional connection to the subject she's trying to learn. Or that is the only way she could possibly learn. Like if something doesn't really trigger her emotionally, she's not necessarily going to be interested in it. She can be moody in a relationship if she does not get enough emotional attention from her partner. She may also be a very good writer regarding romance or spiritualism. And then she hates being controlled by others. She wants to be her own boss or be self-employed or be... Should it be that she's employed by anyone? Sometimes she might come into scenarios where her boss might actually be her enemy in a sense or be the antagonist, you know, for her. Okay, so... Moving on to her second house. So 
So since it's ruled by Mars, it kind of has a similar attributes as the sign of Scorpio because they're both ruled by the same planet essentially. So again, she comes from a family that might have like very esoteric values or again, her father could have been somewhat of an unorthodox type of father or he could have also possibly worked in a field related to anything eighth house so k2 in the second house of aries she does have k2 in the second house of aries in her past life she would have mastered aries related activities war physical activity aggression k2 in this placement could cause her to have self-doubt or lack of self-confidence so pretty much wherever k2 sits that's something you already had previously mastered but also what k2 does in placements it typically challenges the house that it sits in or whatever sign it sits in because it's considered somewhat of a malefic or a bad planet so if she has it in aries aries is all about the self independence um to me it represents like the selfish sign no offense to aries people but that's pretty much what it represents it represents the self so she might have like self doubts regarding her own self confidence or maybe how she looks or something like that even though she might be like beautiful or whatever um she might second guess herself in that sense moving on to her third house so the third house represents communication and siblings so communication with the siblings can be very either good or bad it's black or white there's no in between so this is again because it's mars in there so essentially mars is a planet of aggression so since we have it there there might be some aggression between siblings either she's gonna have like a very active one because mars also gives energy to signs or placements so it's either she has a very active relationship with them where they're doing everything together hanging out all the time or they might actually be enemies because again, Mars represents aggression, war. There could be possibly animosity among siblings, or again, the communication amongst the family can be aggressive, or she could possibly be betrayed by a sibling. Also, we have Taurus, again, ruling her fourth house, which is the home, family. Okay, so since we have the fourth house being ruled by Taurus, so Taurus is originally ruled by the sign of Venus. So we have the ruler of Taurus, which is Venus. We also have the original placement of the fourth house, which is represented by Cancer and Moon. So Venus and the Moon do not get along. Venus likes luxury, likes all the finer things in life, and the Moon just wanes or has its faces ups and downs. So therefore, this would cause some issues within the family where there might be a lot of internal issues within the family, lots of highs and lows between the family. Again, these two planets are not friendly towards one another. This could have also caused her to feel as though she was deprived of nourishment from her mother at some point because the moon also represents the mother in astrology. Or this could have caused her to feel as though she, her mother might have given more nourishment to her other children versus giving nourishment to her. She feels like she didn't get the same amount of nourishment from her mother than her siblings did. So moving on to the fifth house, which is being ruled by Gemini in her case. So again, the fifth house deals with children, deals with the arts and all the fun things you do. So also represent dating so since we have gemini ruling her fifth house this is going to indicate that she's going to have a very communicative relationship with her children or their children her children might be very communicative clever and creative because gemini is ruled by mercury mercury is a very clever planet gemini is a very clever clever and communicative planet and also mercury has a very like agitated way of itself or it's a hot planet so wherever it sits in it's just pretty much gonna emphasize on whatever house it sits in so again fifth house is originally ruled originally deals with the art so it's gonna make children her children specifically to be very creative and again this could also 
give her some form of talent and having good writing skills as well. Within the fifth house, she has the sun and moon conjunction in Gemini. And the conjunction is less than four degrees apart. So again, this is somewhat of a difficult conjunction to analyze. So pretty much the moon represents your mind, your emotions, your emotional responses to things. And the sun represents your ego, your personality, right? So since we have a conjunction of moon and sun, that pretty merges her, her mind, body, and soul together. So this would make her kind of determine in terms of overcoming obstacles in her life. And since the moon is holding the highest degree, she's gonna have the confidence to go forward and finish her plans, but this also indicates that she does have to form some form of development in her self-confidence throughout life. Also, again, since the moon represents the moon, the moon represents the mother and the sun represents the father in astrology, this would have caused some form of issue between the mother and the father of her. Or there might have been issues or conflicts between them. I did ask her a while back, like, when your parents separated or when your parents had you, were they together? And she told me that they were separated at the time. So moving on to her sixth house represents debt, work, diseases. It represents your daily routines, like by daily routines, I mean like what you're doing on a daily basis. Like for instance, me, my daily routine routine is dealing with spirituality, esoteric topics. That's what it represents. In her case, since the house rules all these topics, this would indicate that there's gonna be a lot of ups and downs throughout life. Since again, the sixth house is being ruled by the moon or cancer. In this case, she can face opposition suddenly from people or all of a sudden she might gain enemies. Again, because the moon has its phases where it waxes, it wanes, it goes up, it goes down. Pretty much think of the moon and its influence as like tidal waves in an ocean. And when we're talking about debt, she could all of a sudden gain a lot of debt and then lose debt all of a sudden. It wanes, it grows, it reduces. Same thing with friends. Or enemies friends can become enemies right away okay so moving on to the seventh house of marriage she has two signs ruling her seventh house which is both leo and virgo so i'm going to cover the leo portion first so with this placement she will always look for a partner who can boost her ego or who she can show off because leo represents a luminary the sun it shines its light, right? So also it's related to the arts, related to royalty apparently. So she always is gonna be attracted to people who are either very connected socially or who come off as kind of aggressive or who are very creative or artistic or shine since the house is ruled by Leo. Since she likes to have a partner who can boost her ego since she is very immersed into herself again she's like a very introverted person she kind of seeks the opposite to get someone to get her out of her low comfort zone or at least that's the type of partner that she's gonna get also with this placement it indicates that after her marriage that's when her career is finally going to take off or when you would see a lot of improvements within her life um, also regarding gains and whatnot. Also the partner, whoever she ends up with, is going to be the type of partner to push her to do more. Or to encourage her to do more in life. So, also with this placement, she's likely to have a, a marriage that has some form of glamour to it. So again, we're talking about Leo. Leo rules glamour, rules, you know, getting attention from people. Or her partner might be the type of person who likes to get attention from people who has this little glamour aura about him. So the partner might be flashy or concerned with gaining admiration from others. Partner could also be the partner could also be materialistic or creative, or also her partner could potentially have some form of public life. So that's why I was kind of wondering, I'm like, is she gonna marry a celebrity or something? Um, doesn't necessarily have to be a celebrity, but it could just be someone who's like very well known in the community. Or like, let's say they have like 
a YouTube channel and they happen to have like a lot of followers. It doesn't necessarily have to be those scenarios, but it's someone who gains a lot of attention from the public world. Cause also seventh house rules other people, like the mass crowds. So that's why we're also saying like she, he might have some form of public life cause you have Leo in there and Leo is ruled by the sun. And again, the sun is a luminary in astrology. So we also have Venus in the seventh house Leo. So she can make a living from being a professional matchmaker since Venus represents material things and income. So Venus in astrology represents your daily income, money you get from your job. Since it's in the seventh house of marriage and partnerships, again, this could also possibly make her like a good person to work in a matchmaking field. And again, it's not necessarily a very common job, but I've heard of people working in that field. She can also be a business person. As a spouse, she will also strive to provide comfort and all essential things to her life partner. And again, Venus pretty much rules all sensual things, material things, because it also rules the sign of the Taurus. So also this could represent the spouse's demeanor towards her, like wanting to provide everything for her. Like, oh, you need $500 to go shopping. Oh, here, honey, take my credit card. You know, stuff like that, you know. This position of Venus being in the 10th from the 10th house. When Venus is here, she really thrives to make a progression in her life after marriage. Venus energy of making monetary material gains will occur after marriage. She will get a very good looking husband since Venus indicates beauty. And if Mars is aspecting this Venus, this will indicate that she will get a spouse who is very sexual or who has a very high sex drive. And I looked at her chart and I do believe she does have an aspect for Mars. So yeah, that's pretty much what it could represent. So the Lord of the seventh house, which is the sun, is sitting in the fifth house. So she wants a spouse to take who is creative or who creatively expresses himself again because she's pretty much the polar opposite. She's very introverted. She wants someone to kind of pull her out of her own energy. She'll want him to help her creatively express herself or to bring the fun out in her. She wants a spouse that is fun and a partner who will love her children. She will only marry someone who she will have a tremendous romantic chemistry with. She will also want a spouse who she can learn from or gain spiritual knowledge from and knowledge of ancient texts. So again, I feel like she might want someone who's kind of into the same things as her or who she can discuss those things with. She likes interacting with people in creative fields and with the sun ruling this house, she wants a spouse to be an authoritative figure, someone kind of like with an alpha type personality and someone who will take care of her children, who means business essentially. So her spouse is gonna have a strong inclination towards politics and be very communicative regarding them. So she might end up marrying someone who's all about politics, who probably never shuts up about politics or something like that. Maybe she could marry like a politician, you know, someone who's running for office or something like that. Since we did say he might potentially have like a public life. In her eighth house, she has Libra ruling the house. So her joint assets, because that's what the eighth house represents, are going to be very calculated. Both her and her spouse are going to be very involved into investing or like spending their money wisely. And... Also the eighth house represents in-laws. So again, she's gonna strive to have like intellectual conversations with the in-laws or that's just pretty much what's gonna transpire. Cause in her eighth house, she also has Jupiter. So again, Jupiter is wisdom, intellect, intellectual deep stuff. So in her, when she marries, that's pretty much the type of relationship she's gonna have with her, her in-laws. Since we have Jupiter in the eighth house and Jupiter represents the husband in a female's chart, she is likely to meet her husband in a very secretive way. Why? Because the original house of the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio, which is mysticism, secrecy, hidden things. So again, she's probably going to end up meeting him in a clandestine way. Or when they start dating, they're going to keep it on the low or something like that. 
her husband will also be the type to hide assets from her so like he might have like a secret bank account and not tell her or, like he might actually own property somewhere and not tell her so hey like i'm giving you the heads up right now so like later on if you want to do a little bit private investigating you can he's probably hiding stuff for you girl like go go search <laughs> pretty sure she's gonna be a pi later on PI for her husband. So her husband will have secret assets that she will not know about and he might suddenly reveal it to her or she will suddenly come to find out about it. Let's give an example. So let's say her husband ends up passing away and she comes to find out he has like this huge savings bank account and it's now hers, stuff like that. Also this placement makes her very sexual. We're talking about sexuality here, like no biggie. So the husband can be a little bit overweight he will like to spend money or they will be charitable. They also have a tendency to waste money on spiritual causes or rituals. Gives her a lot of interest. This placement gives her a lot of interest into the occult sciences. Again, because the 8th house pretty much represents that. Occult topics, sciences, death, mysticism, magic, witches, aliens, etc. Also, having this placement, Jupiter pretty much represents your blessings in life. So, having it in the 8th house indicates that you will gain blessings from 8th house topics. Again, you also might possibly be psychic having this placement. Because she's able to connect to another realm, which most people cannot. So, I feel like this is more representative, like maybe what mediums might have, possibly they're able to see stuff we are not able to see she will also have blessings in disguise to anything again related to the eighth house she may be able to tap into the spiritual realm assets again may be hidden by the husband there can also be sudden events like suddenly getting married or suddenly getting divorced and to avoid divorce with this type of placement because there is a risk in getting a divorce when you have you know jupiter in the eighth house the remedy here would be to get married twice in a sense where you get married once and then you go on to repeat the exact same thing that you did the first time around maybe a couple years later like let's say i don't know you get married spontaneously in las vegas all of a sudden one day on a whim two years later you go back to las vegas and then you get remarried i don't know if that's possible but that's what's kind of recommended or at least try to replicate the exact same ceremony at least twice okay so jupiter in this house can give her knowledge of healing medicine traditional or non-traditional ayurvedic healing or pharmacist so also the eighth house represents surgeons or surgery so she might also do well in that field like maybe be like a surgical tech um what else? Maybe she could also possibly be like a good psychic or someone who studies the occult and then teaches it to people. Um, so that's pretty much what you would possibly benefit from because Jupiter brings you blessings. Like for instance, I have it in the 12th house, so I'm benefiting from spiritual topics. So also having that placement for me indicates that I would possibly have like successful um, spiritual business which i have so i benefited from anything 12th house and you or her in her case would benefit from anything 8th house related so if you want to google what the meaning of the 8th house or what it represents then that's pretty much what you could possibly benefit from so again when jupiter is aspecting onto the 12th house from the 8th house it will indicate wasteful spending or energy to charity or spirituality the spouse may not like this and he will also try to control his wasteful spending so maybe she's like overly charitable maybe she loves giving donating to organizations or like maybe she loves spending on spiritual stuff he's gonna have a problem with it so in the eighth house she can do foreign trade she can also travel abroad to teach people about hidden knowledge in modern age perspective you could also say like you're teaching people from foreign places or from distant places about spirituality don't necessarily have to travel to abroad you know looking at the second house of assets and family she can suddenly have fights with family because again eighth house represents sudden events Jupiter sitting in there pretty much amplifies things 
and it's now aspecting onto the second house. So again, she could have sudden fights with family and they tend to change her home setting a lot or she also has a tendency to move a lot with this placement or also she has the tendency to keep secrets to herself or maybe she keeps secrets from her family that she has never told him and they might be like quite significant secrets As the aspect of jupiter onto the fourth house of nourishment i mean her fourth house isn't that bad except for like having a malefic there which is mars um pretty much agitating the fourth house so in her case i would pretty much say like she probably had issues in the home life where things probably weren't that peaceful so now we have the lord of the 11th in the eighth house and we're still technically talking about jupiter so that you know she could talk to you about occult sciences again or again she has like a very secretive tendency to her because again the eighth house represents secrets so she's the type of person to like maybe become like really good friends with one person and like this person's so cool but she won't introduce them to her other friend because she kind of wants to keep this friend all to herself and then therefore the other friend might notice that and catch on to it and they might not like it and like they might end up suddenly stop being friends with her because of such things where she might be too secretive where it might actually work against her in a sense in terms of like keeping relationships or keeping friendships so she pretty much likes to make friends that are associated to mystical or secretive so secretive societies researchers psychologists she likes friends who are deep thinkers who investigate stuff that others will not she will likely have many friends who are psychics tarot readers etc she wants friends who can show them who can show her hidden things gains will come from hidden treasure she will either win a sudden windfall of money through acquiring it through her network circle or like inheritance so again for her there's wealth indicated but it's gonna be through sudden events like someone dying maybe her husband dies he leaves her an inheritance she becomes filthy rich or maybe her parents die and leave her like property or something like that or maybe she wins the lottery and she wins like a big sum of money stuff like that it's pretty much what the eighth house represents she will get money if she invests she could possibly make gains if she invests in things that come from underground because we're talking about hidden things so we're talking about petroleum gemstones anything that comes from the earth she her source of earning will come from hidden resources she will have gains through revolutionizing an industry her gains will have ups and downs this can also show that relationships with siblings will fluctuate. She is likely to lose friends because she is so secretive, as I mentioned. So Jupiter also, again, is a benefic. So think of Jupiter almost like a guardian angel that comes to save the day. So she's likely to gain money all of a sudden out of nowhere when she's like on her last, you know, penny almost. Or like when the rent's due, she might all of a sudden find it. She has that type of love to her. That's happened to me previously where I like all of a sudden got like $4,000 out of nowhere <laughs> in the most weirdest way. But yeah, anyway, so so again, she likes to make friends who are very wise and who are mystics. So also she has Rahu in her eighth house. So Rahi, Rahu here wants to take control of the spouse's assets. So she might like to control his money. She wants to win the hearts of the in-laws or also this could possibly be the husband's demeanor towards like the assets like maybe he likes to control it right um but it could be her so rahu keeps deep dark secrets in in this placement rahu again makes a good surgeon or medical related person she will gain wealth throughout life and again, she's the type of person who wants to know the secrets of the world. Placement, since Rahu is a malefic parent and it kind of like is no good wherever it sits. Since we're talking about, you know, eighth house aspecting onto the second house, this might indicate some form of detachment from her family. Here, Rahu also becomes cunningly intelligent if she gets angry at anyone also with this placement. She's going to have the type... A personality have like very vulgar language towards them when she's angry or she goes off to slander her enemy she's the type of person who go possibly talk shit about if she's pissed um 
Also, she has to be careful with this because Rahu pretty much magnifies, you know, wherever it sits. So, 8th house represents, is originally ruled by Mars, which is again, aggression, war. So when you have Rahu here, it might actually agitate her so much when she's angry that she might actually get blinded by anger. So she kind of has to watch her, her temperament when she's angry. Moving on to the ninth house. The ninth house is being ruled by Scorpio. So ninth house represents higher education, philosophical views. So in this case, kind of looks as though they're balanced. Her 10th house, since we have Scorpio again, originally ruling or originally being ruled by Mars. 10th house is again, how you come off in the career world in your workplace, how well you do in career in terms of how you approach your work situation. So having Scorpio ruling her 10th house, this can make her kind of jealous towards other people's success or she might not express it, but like maybe deep down inside she kind of holds some form of envy for them. And this might cause her to self-destruct in a sense where like, it kind of gets in her way. So she again, she has to be conscious of that. Um, she might also come off as fierce or aggressive in the workplace and therefore people are not going to be sure how to approach her. Like, uh, I don't know if she's in a good mood, I don't know if she's in a good mood bad mood um or you might come off as quiet or she might come off as quiet and like people aren't too sure like how to speak to her she also puts up a front to conceal her competitive side and she also schemes with her partner or spouse to see how they could i guess move on up in life or attain some form of better status for themselves in life she might also attempt to gain status or in her work field she might try to get ahead by using her sex appeal or you know her looks might prove to be somewhat beneficial to her in climbing being successful in life and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a bad way like let's say she's a really good looking person let's say she has like a beauty channel or something like that and she's very attractive that might incline people to watch her more or, you know, stuff like that. To the 11th house, we have Sagittarius there, okay? So also remember Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is sitting in her 8th house of the occult, hidden things, secrets, sex. So our gains are going to be very good because the 11th house represents gains. And again, you have Sagittarius. It's originally ruled by a benefic Jupiter, which expands and makes things blow up, essentially. So again, this indicates good wealth for her throughout life. Jupiter rules this house. Her network circle is going to be full of intelligent people or who are like the best of the best in her field. Makes contacts with people who are spiritual or inclined towards the occult. The 11th house lord sitting in the 8th. This indicates that she can make substantial gains through anything associated again to the 8th house. Such as inheritances, research work, occult, mysticism, spying, detective work, mines, petroleum, taxes. This placement also indicates that out of her life she might gain through sudden events. The more she struggles in life, the more she will gain. When I wrote that, it kind of reminded me of this one specific song and it's in Spanish and I think like if you know Spanish, you'll probably understand it. So it's called La Niña by La Mala Rodriguez. So if you read the lyrics, it kind of represents what I just said. Like the more she struggles in life, the more she will gain. Except Mala Rodriguez wrote that song like in terms of like struggling on the streets, selling drugs or whatever. Anyway, so moving on to the 12th house. She's the type of person who's not going to be the type to like want to be far away from home. She might feel frustrated or tired being away from home because the 12th house represents how you kind of exhaust yourself or the energy that's lost. So since you have 12th house here ruled by Capricorn and again Capricorn is ruled by Saturn which is the restrictor in astrology, you know, the not so fun planet. Um, Pretty much, if she has foreign travel, which is represented by the 12th house, again, she's gonna feel exhausted by it. She's probably not gonna like it all that much, or it's just gonna be feeling like very, you know, exhausted for her. 
Whenever she takes long distance trips, she is willing to be away but not for too long because it exhausts the body. She might also feel sleep deprived should she travel. The Saturn is sitting in her first house which rules the body. So that's probably why she would feel exhausted. So that has been essentially my breakdown, my synopsis on her chart. Again, she is likely to gain from anything related to the 8th house. Research what the 8th house represents. That way you, you kind of get a glimpse of like what more you can do. Um, but essentially, pretty much stated anything related to the 8th house. Occult, hidden things, research detective work um also eighth house deals with joint assets between you and your spouse so you might actually gain a lot a lot from your spouse um inheritances death is you know related to the eighth house so if someone dies you might actually inherit money from that um or let's say someone dies and their insurance policy comes to you stuff like that that's pretty much what's indicated on her chart i haven't had a chart that kind of pretty much represents such mysticism such secrecy or such mysteriousness to someone but this would be the first other charts are pretty straightforward but hers is just pretty much riddled with secrecy the occult hidden knowledge you know being kind of mysterious is how i would kind of describe her so yeah that has pretty much been my breakdown of her chart hope she enjoyed it if you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.